Today, we'll begin talking about the primate order. Now, you might wonder, why do anthropologists who say that they study humans also study primates? For one, we want to compare humans to modern primates to see how alike and how different we are from each other. Many of the physical characteristics that many of us think as human are common also to other primates. And we ask, what are the implications of shared characteristics between humans and other primates? Which traits are primate in general? Or do we share any traits because our ancient common ancestor had those traits? Similar selective forces could produce traits that look alike, that are similar in function. These are produced by convergent evolution, but not because the two creatures share a common ancestor. We call these analogous traits. One example of this would be bats, a type of mammal, and grasshoppers, a type of insect. Both fly and both have wings, but not because they share a common ancestor. Versus homologous traits, a trait that was inherited from a common ancestor. And these are the traits that are of special interest to anthropologists. If the traits were present in an ancestor predating the beginnings of humans and are still present today, then we suppose that early humans would have had those traits. And we would like to learn as much as we could about early humans. Linnaeus described organisms by classifying them in a taxonomy based on similarities and differences. Taxonomy uses hierarchical sets of nested categories from general to more specific. So starting at the most general level in this list, animals. Within that, we belong to a group called vertebrates. We also are a type of mammal. And more specifically, we are in the primate order. Let's look for a minute at the characteristics that mammals share among each other. We have a reproductive strategy of few, usually live births. And the children require extensive postnatal care. Mammals are associated with higher intelligence and greater capacity for learned behavior. They also have differentiated teeth, that is, all their teeth don't look alike, but they have different kinds of teeth, just like we do. We have incisors, we have canines, we have molars. Mammals have a skeletal structure that's capable of swift movement. And they have the ability to maintain constant body temperature. Looking more specifically at the order of primates, we see a very generalized order whose essential environmental niche is arboreal. What do I mean by arboreal? It means living in trees. Many primate characteristics relate to living in trees, but controversy exists over whether initial evolution of these traits was adaptation to an arboreal lifestyle or instead adaptation to hunting insects in low branches. Primates can be divided into two suborders. One is more primitive, meaning that they arose earlier and have retained these early characteristics. And one is less primitive, that is evolved more recently. Anthropoids are the less primitive primates. We are a type of anthropoid. And anthropoids have the characteristics that we will use to define primates. Versus prosimians, which are more primitive and evolved earlier. So in this case, primitive means older, evolved first, and retain early characteristics. Primate physical characteristics are best exemplified by the suborder of anthropoids. I'll list six items here and then go over each independently. The first is grasping pentadactyl hands and feet. The second is some degree of opposability in hands. The third is emphasis on sight over smell. The fourth are tactile pads and nails. The fifth is generalized skeleton with retention of the clavicle. And the sixth is the largest and most complex brain of mammals. 
As I said, I'll go over each of these six characteristics in detail. What do I mean by grasping pentadactyl hands and feet? Pentadactyl refers to five digits. This is the first of many Latin-based words that we'll be using in this class. And if instead of panicking, you stop and kind of put the, pull the word apart, you can figure out what it means. Penta means five, as in pentagrams. Dactyl refers to digits. Penta, dactyl, five digits. Prehensile means ability to grasp. You put these together, we have flexible hands and feet. We have opposable thumbs. All of this adds up to manual dexterity. Primates have an emphasis on sight over smell. The snout has generally been abbreviated and less emphasis placed on smelling ability and a portion of the brain that was devoted to smelling shrank while the portion devoted to vision expanded. Primate vision is binocular, meaning that it has an overlapping field of vision that provides depth. Vision is also stereoscopic. Each eye transmits to both sides of the brain. Most primates have color vision and good visual acuity. We have a presence of a post-orbital bar. Here's another Latin-based word, post, in this case meaning behind, and orbit meaning eye. In other words, the eye is surrounded and protected by bone. Here, for example, is a raccoon skull, and you can see that the eye is not entirely protected by bone. Even this lemur, a primitive type of primate, the eye is not totally protected. As you look at one of the anthropoids, the eye is in totally cased and protected by bone. It has a post-orbital bar. In other words, most primates see what and how we see. Primates have tactile pads and nails. In other words, we have flat fingernails instead of claws. These fingernails provide support for our tactile pads, otherwise known as our finger pads, that are sensitive to touch and incidentally have fingerprints. Primates also have a generalized skeleton with retention of a clavicle. A clavicle is the collarbone and it allows unusual flexibility of arms and shoulders. You can swing your arms in many different directions. Other mammals have lost the clavicle. For example, dogs have no clavicle. Their legs can only go forward and backward. Primates have the largest and most complex brain among the mammals, that is, in relation to their body size. So the ratio of brain size to body size is larger than most mammals. Both the cortex and neocortex have expanded in size, resulting in more brain tissue concerned with memory, thought, and association capabilities. Only marine mammals are comparable. Most primates give single birth, although a few regularly bear twins. And relative to size, primates have the longest postnatal, that is after birth, dependency of all mammals. We have a long period of growth and development. Both great apes and humans don't become sexually mature until they are over 10 years old. We also have a relatively long lifespan. This long period of growth and development is associated with an emphasis on learning. As an aside, skeletal maturation has been studied in detail only in a few of the primates, including humans, macaques, chimpanzees, and capuchins. When we look at related social characteristics as opposed to physical characteristics, we see parental investment. Again, most primates give single birth. It's a long gestation associated with a long lifespan, 
but this prolonged infant dependency results in a greater dependency of that infant on their parents. So the infants depend on their parents to learn flexible learned behavior. This results in sociality, that is, the need for long care of offspring places a selective value on support by a social group. I've already asked you to watch this video that's linked here, What is a Primate? Let's look at primates from top to bottom, starting with cranial characteristics that is, characteristics of the head. The skull has two general parts, the brain case, which holds the brain and organs of sense, versus the face, which includes the jaws, teeth, chewing muscles, and associated soft tissue. Within the order, the relative sizes and shapes of these two vary. You can see that humans here have a very large brain and a very flat face compared to the chimpanzee, orangutan, and macaque, which all three have much longer faces and relatively smaller brains. The muscles for facial expression are highly differentiated and developed among all the primates. Teeth more than any other body part, give basic information on primate evolution. Thank goodness, because they are the most often preserved bone. They are the hardest bone in the body. Primates have upper and lower jaw teeth, and these are bilaterally symmetrical. Generally, primates have four kinds of teeth, just like us, incisors, canines, premolars, which my dentist calls bicuspids, and molars. I say generally because a few primates have dental combs. The number of teeth for each species can be expressed by a dental formula. This gives the count of the four kinds of teeth for half of a jaw. So for instance, the half of the upper jaw or half of the lower jaw. You'll notice on the left here, the dental formula for humans. From front to back, these are two incisors, one canine, two premolars, and three molars. Since the teeth are bilaterally symmetrical, on the other side of this jaw, you would see the same pattern, two, one, two, three. You can see that New World monkeys have one more tooth than do we. Primitive mammals have 44 teeth, three, one, four, three, both on the top jaw and the lower jaw. In primates, the trend is to reduction. Many primates, like us, have 32 teeth, two, one, two, three in the upper jaw and two, one, two, three in the lower jaw. Primates have both deciduous, what we colloquially call baby teeth, and permanent teeth. Humans have 20 deciduous teeth, none of which are molars. Primate molars and often premolars have cusps and ridges, hence why my dentist calls premolars bicuspids. They have two cusps. The pattern can help to identify groups. One distinctive type of primate molar has five cusps, and it's known as the Y5 cusp pattern. Your molars have this cusp. And in fact, this pattern is found only among the hominoids, that is, the apes and humans. Now, why is it called the Y5 cusp pattern? Because in between the cusps, it looks somewhat like a Y. This means that let's say you were walking around a fossil field in East Africa and found a molar that looked like yours. Well, you would know that you had found either a human molar or an ape molar. Let's look now quickly at postcranial characteristics. Post, this means below, in this case, cranial head, below the head, that is the body and limbs. So postcranial refers to the body and limbs. Well, the basic skeletal structure of primates is generalized. 
we have wide movement flexibility. And we retain the clavicle, which is a primitive mammalian trait that other mammals have lost. The clavicle refers then to the collarbone. Primates have a variety of limb proportions and different modes of locomotion, meaning different ways of moving. One of these is vertical clinging and leaping. Another is brachiation or swinging. One is quadrupedal, another one of those Latin derived words, quadru meaning four, pedal meaning feet, walking on four feet. Terrestrial quadrupeds walk on the ground on four feet. Arboreal quadrupeds walk up in tree limbs on four feet. Knuckle walking and bipedal locomotion. Primate locomotion is the topic of our next lecture. What is one point of all that I've just listed? Well, at some point on a test, I'll be asking you to either list for me primate characteristics or ways in which primates differ from mammals or even ways in which humans differ from other primates. So, for example, the characteristics I listed as common to all mammals are not characteristics that differentiate primates because those characteristics are common to all mammals. Additionally, I've introduced a lot of terminology that I'll be using for at least the next two thirds of the semester. If you don't learn this terminology, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. So I trust you have printed out your vocabulary list for part one and are writing in the definitions for new words as we go along. Let's face it, word definitions form a large part of tests in this course.